Hi everybody, welcome to another Thursday Tips and Tricks. Today we're gonna try to take the mystery out of resizing your blocks. Inevitably, in your quilting career, you're gonna to wanna to change your project sizes. And we get that question asked every week in the office. And there are a couple different ways you can change your project sizes. You can add more borders to make things bigger. You can add more blocks. You can take away blocks to change it to a bigger or a smaller project. But one of the ways to change your project sizes is to change the size of the blocks that you're using to create your projects. And that's what we're gonna to try to take a little bit of the mystery out of. How do I figure out what size I need to end up with to make a different size block. There are a couple things you're going to need to be familiar with in order to be able to work your way through changing block sizes. One, you're going to need to be able, you're going to need to be, you're going to, you're going to need to be able to divide your block into a basic grid. Uh, most of our blocks are either four patches or nine patches or five patches or seven patches, but they're divided into a basic grid shape. And I'm going to show you how to do that with an overlay, but you can do that in your own mind. And you're going to need to be able to identify which units are in there and so what size the units need to be. And you're also going to need to make sure that you truly understand the difference between finished sizes and unfinished sizes. So let me start with that first. If you're a rookie and you, you may be confused by this finished, unfinished, basically the finished size of any unit that's in your block is based on what size that unit will be when all the stitching is complete and the project is done, it is finished. So this project calls for four patches that are in the corner and I have an unfinished unit up there. But if I stitched or drew lines a quarter of an inch from the edge and I measured from there to there where my stitching will be, that measurement is gonna be finished. The unfinished size or the cut size is the size that the unit is from edge to edge when you're seeing raw edges. Hopefully that takes a little bit of the mystery out of that, but realize to change, you should always work with finish sizes, what you want to end up with, and then figure out what it is you need to cut. All right, so talking about a grid, this is a nine patch block. It has three equal divisions going this way and three equal divisions going this way. And you can see that when I lay this grid over the top. Now I've subdivided the grid. I have black lines at the basic divisions and then I've subdivided those and because I worked with a pattern and made my first block from a pattern and they told me to cut a four inch, four and a half inch square for the center cut size, I knew that that grid had to be four inches by four inches by four inches to give me the 12 inch block for my project. And I've identified the shapes that I need. I need four patches for the corners. I need a simple square for the center and I need pairs of flying geese for those um, north, south, east, west sections of the block. Now I want to make it a different size and I don't have this for my cutting directions to tell me to cut four and a half inch squares and two and a half inch squares, but I want to make a block smaller. So think about changing the size of your grid. Instead of four inch divisions, if I made a grid that was two inches by two inches in this direction, I would actually end up making a six inch finished block. And what size is that square in the center? It's gonna be two inches square. I need to cut it two and a half. Those four patches need to be two inches finished, meaning that one inch, one inch, one inch, and one inch squares, and how you, you know, this, the size you need to cut them are gonna be one and a half, and those flying geese units need to finish to one inch by two inch. And you pick your favorite method for making flying geese. For me, it would be the fast flying geese and the wind clipper. But I think maybe it's getting a little brighter around here because people are beginning to understand that if you know the breakdown of the block, then you can change it. Um, this is a 15 inch block and I didn't make a grid for that one, but I'll bet you can figure it out that each of those units need to finish to five inches. Now here's another thing that you want to consider. Since these blocks are nine patches and they divide by three, don't try to change your block size to 10 inch because trying to divide 10 by three 
is really going to be a problem. So stick to block sizes that are easily divisible by three, 12 inch, six inch, 15 inch. I could do nine inch. I could do 18 inch because those block sizes are easily divisible by three, which is what I need to do. Now, um, making the different units, of course, is totally up to you. But one of the reasons I created tools to deal with so many different size basic shapes are so that you can easily make those changes. For these four patches, they need to finish to four. These four patches needed to finish to two. These four patches need to finish to five. And you can figure out what size squares to cut or what size strips to cut. But what I would do, if you have a four patch square, go right to this tool. It's designed for making those four patches. You figure out the, those sizes on the chart. It will give you starting size strips to cut because I would much prefer to do this with strips. And then, trim down sections to be able to clean things up so that you know they're exactly five and a half inches unfinished when I go to build. And I don't know if you realize that on this big block, I actually changed that center. I went from a plain square to a diamond square unit. And I've got no measurements on, on there anywhere in any instructions, but if you have my square square tool, and we just talked about this about a week ago, you've got the tool to be able to make that shape. Five inches is one of the sizes that's on this one tool here. The cutting the center square, the oversizing, and the trimming down. So I can easily replace a plain square with a different piece if I want to. And if I wanted to do it with a two inch, I could do that with this tool. And with the four inch, I could do it with the square square tool as well. And for making those flying geese, the method they had me make with the original one was not my favorite by far. What I will do every time when there are flying geese involved is I will use the wing clipper tool and the set of instructions that will give you the two inch by four inch flying geese, the one by two inch flying geese, and the two and a half by five inch flying geese. Once I know what size I need to end up with, I have both the finished and the unfinished sizes. The numbers and all the information is there with the tool so that I can make those shapes bigger, trim them down, create better units, and then end up creating better blocks and end up with more successful quilts in my tool, in my stash of quilts. So hopefully this is making a little bit of sense that know the grid, know what you want to make, know the sizes that you want them to finish to, and then pick up the right tool and work your way through. Good luck with all your projects. I hope to, that you're gonna be able to now customize some quilts in your future. Good luck everybody, take care.